What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and Al. My name is Max and today we are checking out the all new Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. This is the most sporty version and the one to have probably. Uh, we're going to find that out today. So I'm going to show you around it. We're going to talk a bit about what it is, what it's supposed to compete with. The drivetrain, of course, the interior. We're going to cover it all and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. Now, let's start with the fact that they have called this a Mustang. Um, you've probably made up your mind already about this and you're either against it or you don't care. But I think this is a big mistake by Ford. I think dusting off the Mach-E name, the Mach-1, Mach-E, I quite like that. I think that's a cool nod to like the past, to Ford Mustangs, and I would have accepted that and said, okay, nice touch, Mach-E, I like that. But the fact that they call this a Mustang and put all the ponies on there and say that, you know, it has something to do with a Mustang, it just rubs me the wrong way. I, I really don't like it because it immediately gives this car shoes to fill. Well, this is the first time they're doing anything like this. So why would you make it so difficult for yourself by calling it a Mustang? And you could have just called it a Ford Mach-E and given it a couple of Ford Mustang uh, design cues like the bonnet or the lights or the rear lights, whatever. And still we would have said, okay, nice touch. By calling it a Mustang, you're also raising the bar of the expectations people have. And I think that they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that one. However, I do think it's quite a handsome car. Uh, we've got a cyber orange car today. And as you can see, the front end is super sporty, super aggressive. That's because we have the GT model. So you can see that we've got quite a pronounced front splitter down there, which you don't get on a regular Mach-E. Uh, we also get this black grille with this sort of grille structure in there. As you can see, this is made to look like a, a real grille. If you go for a regular Mach-E, this is in body color and you have this black line on top of it, which kind of looks like a mustache. Uh, so definitely this is the way to go. Very nice, beautiful headlight units as well. And of course, we've got that nice bonnet with those lines in there. It is a handsome front end, especially. Now, these wheels are pretty cool as well. 20 inch, and these are wider and bigger than you get on a regular Mach-E. We also have 18 inch Brembo brakes. And I think if you compare this car to the US Mach-E GT, uh, you can also get a performance package over there. And I think we get that as standard here in Europe because I think these wheels are part of that performance package. You get better brakes and the torque is raised from 813 Newton meters to 860. And that is the number we get. So I think you get the performance package as standard here, which is pretty cool. Moving on down the side, we've got black mirror caps. We've got all this black window surround. And then we've got a very clever thing that Ford did, um, which is you can see that the, the cyber orange runs here. And this is a, a quite a sharp downward line. And this gives it that super nice fast back look. But you can see that you've got this black roof part running on top of it. And that means that we'll talk about the doors later if you sit in here you've actually got quite a bit of head room because this is much higher than it seems and i think that is very clever well done ford and then at the rear we've got the sequential tail lights another design cue to the mustang of course and we've got a gt badge here whereas if you go for the normal mac e you get a pony badge all-wheel drive badge on the rear awd and then on the side we've got mac e 4x does that also mean four-wheel drive or what is that i don't know i couldn't find anything about that so it's kind of strange we've got a black side skirt there lower part it is a pretty handsome car from certain angles especially now the doors as promised uh, we've got these buttons here so at the front you've got a button and then this little handle so you press that it pops open and you pull it 
you can also open it with the code as you can see and then at the rear you just have this button press it the door opens and you open it like that but if you press the button you can't immediately close it so you can't put your hand in there and immediately accidentally close it or whatever so i guess that is pretty that's pretty handy yeah quite like that um what else do we have well we can oh, can we open the front from here there we go and then we've got a little bit of storage here with a drain so you can actually clean this out with a hose and some water a couple of cup holders here as well i guess <laughs> no that's a joke um mustang pony this is not that big this is more for like a couple of dirty boots or something like that and then in the rear of course you are hurt by the sloping roof line but it is still quite a nice sized trunk all right let's get in and we'll talk a bit more about the drivetrain because all electric of course and we've got an 88 kilowatt hour battery um, this car produces 487 horsepower and 860 newton meters of torque this is the most powerful version the the most sporty version we've got magna ride dampers the four-wheel drive system is rear wheel biased so they really set this car up to feel as sporty as possible the ride height is 10 millimeters lower the dampers are stiffer um, yeah they did a lot to make this car feel sporty which i really like you also of course have like the entry level and the long range version which in its optimal form delivers a range of 610 kilometers wltp and this delivers a range of 500 now on the interior we've got these awesome ford performance seats with this super nice shoulder bolstering the relationship with recaro has ended apparently so ford performance make their own seats now uh, but i have to say these are super nice we've got a gt logo here some nice storage down there We've got a space for your phone down there with wireless charging. And then of course, we've got this massive screen, which is sort of mandatory now in electric vehicles, I guess. But I really do like that you have this system here, which uh, the response to your inputs is fine. And I, I think it looks cool. Uh, it's quite easy to operate, but you have an extra display right there with the most important stuff. So your charge, your range, uh, your trip, and your speed uh, which i really like i like that not everything is in here like you get with a tesla you still have some decent stuff there and we have a physical volume button with a very nice sound system so this b and o bang and olufsen uh, sound system with a sound bar right there is as comes as standard on the gt 10 speakers and it's really good the sound is really impressive so that's very nice and then what else do we have we've got driving modes as you can see untamed is the most sporty one and then you've got whisper and active um, we do have untamed plus here which means that it's sort of for track mode and it conditions basically the batteries for more performance so you can see here traction control intervention of stability control energy regeneration regenerative braking is reduced and more geared towards track driving. Chassis dynamics, power and throttle response are configured for control and trust on the track, something like that. Um, it might not be available because of vehicle circumstances, vehicle whatever. And I can already, <laughs> I, I mean, it's nine degrees. Why, why can't I use it? I can't use it, it's not working not working because it's too cold or whatever i don't really like that i think if i want untamed plus i should be able to hit it or at least tell me why it's not working because this is super weird uh we've got a one pedal drive button right there but i don't really like that and you can and you can turn off or on the sound right there so the fake sound uh, for the for the drive if you look at build quality though i have to say that ford has done a good job if you compare this to a model 3 which we have driven but model y is basically the same thing um, quality wise 
panel gap wise, this all feels really good uh, compared to a Tesla. I also like the fact that with this GT, you get basically everything as standard. So the only option you have is going for this panoramic roof, which is quite large. Uh, and of course you can choose a color and stuff like that. But there are very few optional extras left in this car. And that is very nice. Okay, so let's start it up and immediately turn off the lane keeping assist, which automatically turns on. Okay, now we can also turn off traction control with a button right there. ESC, we can turn that off. And I can show you that indeed, it sends a lot of power <laughs> to the rear wheel. <laughs> it is very wet though, as you can see. So if we stop here with ESC off and we try to do a launch, you have a lot of wheel spin and you'll never get close to the times that Ford claims. But there is a problem with that because I've seen so many different numbers floating around, even within Ford on their website in the Netherlands, they state 3.7 seconds. Um, but I've also seen like an image that said zero to 100 in less than 3.5 seconds. So I know that there's the, the, the one foot rollout nonsense that people sometimes use, but it would be good to have just one number, just one. Uh, instead of four different ones. We've been able to do 4.5 in these conditions, which, yeah, it, it doesn't really say anything, I know that, but uh, just for reference. Now, we have the fake sound on, as you can hear. And I have to say, we've been driving this car for a couple of days now, and I am very impressed with the way they've set up this car. Uh, of course, we've got those Magnarite dampers, but the car just feels like a Ford. It feels like an ST car by Ford, uh, the way they've set up the suspension. It is quite firm, but still relatively comfortable. And it just handles <laughs> the way you would expect from a fast European Ford. The good thing in this untamed version, in this untamed mode, is that you also get less regenerative braking. So the brake pedal feels a bit more natural than it does in the active mode or uh, with the one pedal drive. So I quite like that as well. But uh, let's take it to the Autobahn now and find out what it's like. I already know. <laughs> and this is going to be a good one. I do, I really like the balance of this car. They really did their best to try and set up this car so you could have fun with it. Because when you're on a roundabout and you go on the throttle too soon, it, it still is just so happy and it, it will just slide so easily. Okay, so we're at the Autobahn. We're going to slow down to 100 kilometers an hour and then we're going to floor it. Of course, we've done our measurements from 100 to 200 and um, Ford claims 487 horsepower for this car. The problem is though, the faster you go, the less power it delivers. So you actually need a lot of space and time to be able to do 100 to 200 measurement. It is the slowest car we've ever measured. We've done over 400 cars with Draghi. And this is the slowest one with 54 seconds. It's 14 seconds slower than a 143 horsepower VW Up GTI. It is ridiculous. The GT has a top speed limited at 200 kilometers an hour. Well, it's not limited. It, it won't go any faster. Maximum speed has been reduced. I don't know why. We've got 48% battery. So it won't go any faster than 180 now. Uh, this is horrible. And it brings me back to that point of why would you name this a Mustang? It just dilutes the Mustang. It, it damages the Ford Mustang. I don't understand why no one at Ford that had anything to say said, no, this is too much. This is full throttle in a GT Mustang. How is this acceptable? 
Uh, I know that not a lot of people will use this car like this, but still, it should be able to do it, right? Now, we've even got some footage of Martijn attempting to do a 100-200 run, and he in the and inadvertently, he ended up in the slowest drag race of all time with a woman in a Skoda diesel who was, well, just beside herself with joy that she finally was able to beat someone in a drag race. Uh, you can see here that it is crawling, absolutely crawling, and Martijn is being overtaken by the Skoda at higher speed because it just has no power. So performance wise, it is a bit of a joke. Let's be honest. A Tesla will do 250 kilometers an hour. They have fixed all the heat problems they had. So a Model 3 performance, a Model Y performance will do multiple 250 kilometers an hour runs before overheating. This, I haven't even done one and it already limits the power and I don't know why. So uh, that's not great. The good thing though is that you can really feel that Ford has done their best to try and make this a fun car. To make it handle like a Ford Performance car should handle. And we know that they are one of the best at setting up these cars. Ford Focus ST, Ford Focus RS, Fiesta STs, Mustang GTs, uh, Shelby GT350s, they all handle like a dream. And you can really feel the family connection with this car. I really, really appreciate the fact that they've tried to make this car so much fun to, to drive. And you don't really see it that often in electric cars. So that is one of the biggest positives about this car. So in the end, it is a flawed car. I really have to say that. It's a car of big pros and big cons. There are things that I think are absolutely magnificent and there are things that I think are horrible. So I know that we test cars in a way that hardly ever makes electric cars shine, but still I think, you know, we as petrol heads, as car lovers, as people who love driving are still going to use electric cars like this in the future. So they should be tested like this as well. And I think that as long as you drive this car, you know, to and from work, maybe sometimes a nice B road and some highway stuff as well, you're going to love this car. And I really love the fact that Ford still has this aim for driving fun. So I think that is a nice conclusion for today. I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right.